For over a lifetime, K-State football was a non-factor in college football, a program once billed by Sports Illustrated as Futility U. But with the arrival of an unknown assistant from Iowa, the once laughed at program would become no longer a laughing matter. And in the process, the hiring would transform Fall Saturdays in Manhattan into a call to arms for all Wildcat fans. It's a tremendous challenge here, and I think this has the, the opportunity for the greatest turnaround in college football exists here today, and it's not, and it's not one to be taken lightly. To K-State and the entire state of Kansas, Bill Snyder is more than just a football coach. He is the savior, the one who led the program to heights never before thought possible. He did it by instilling a specific list of goals, character traits for life on and off the football field. Things like discipline, accountability, and responsibility. Do these things, Snyder promised, and success will follow. And he was right. Snyder's connection with people remains as strong as ever among current and former players, not to mention fans and those in the profession who have come to know him as K-Staters know him. The rock steady force behind the K-State football program success story. The man who guided the Wildcats from dormancy to dominance and transformed a program into one synonymous with success. The Vice President of Sports Operations for Union Broadcasting, Todd Lebo. Former Kansas State quarterback and team captain, Stan Weber. A starter on the Wildcats Cotton Bowl winner and former Chief John McGraw. And Remington finalist and Super Bowl champion, Nick Lecky. Okay, thanks so much to everyone for coming, especially our guys up top, our listeners. We've loved you forever. My name is Todd Lebo. I've worked at the radio station for 24 years, and this might be my last night because they gave me one job. They said, um, get a hold of Coach Snyder and have him come here, and Stan Weber helped me do that. And then uh, all the flights got canceled, and he is literally driving home from somewhere in a rental car. So he couldn't be here, so I guess I'm fired tonight. I don't know. We'll see. But in his place, we got a couple of great Wildcats who played for Coach Snyder and Stan Weber, who knows more about K-State football than anyone I know and has been with the program since before then. So here's uh, Stan Weber, John McGraw, and Nick Lecky. Thanks, Todd. First of all, congratulations to WHB for 100 years, and especially Sports Radio 810 WHB. It's been great to be on. Got to thank Todd Lebo, and especially my partner on 9 o'clock every Saturday for over 20 years, Danny Klinkskill. I'll give a big round of applause to Todd Danny. and Danny. Well. Danny's out there somewhere. Now, Coach Snyder coached 333 games for the Wildcats over 27 years, and one of the great claims to fame that I have, maybe the only thing I have in common with Coach is I'm the only human being that saw every one of those games live, and I saw every play, about 60,000 plays. Coach Snyder, when he started, Todd, was in the Big 8, and K-State hadn't won a couple games. Mitch Holtz and I were announcing, and it looked like, what the heck's going to happen? Well, he started turning things around, and I want you to know, you know how great the SEC is right now? Mm -hmm. When the Big 8 turned to the Big 12 from 94 to 90, during that seven-year period, the Big 12 had four different years, Big 8 or Big 12, where they won a national championship. And during that time, Bill Snyder won at least nine games every year, won 72 games in seven years with five different starting quarterbacks. It was unbelievable, and he might have had the greatest team ever in 1998. John, you were on that team. You were in that era where you guys were turning it on, played in the Big 12 championship. What was it like being around Coach Snyder, and how good was that 1998 team? Yeah, Stan, thank you. Great question. First, how many Wildcats do we have in here? <laughs> that, that sounds better. So, so I, I grew up really close to Manhattan. My dream was to play football at K-State for Coach Snyder. Watching him turn around that program, uh, it, it, was, it was amazing. And here, here's the secret to Coach Snyder's success. You guys ready? Here's the secret. 
There is no secret. It's just good old-fashioned hard work, all right, and preparation and holding everyone accountable. Uh, and it was, a, it was a dream come true to get to play for him. It was hard to play for Coach Snyder. Coach Snyder was very demanding. One really quick story. I'm a walk-on, and I'm trying to earn a scholarship. We're in training camp, and we're in a conditioning drill. I, I run so hard, I pass out. I pass out. I wake up. The trainers help bring me to the huddle. At this point, practice is over, and Coach Snyder is addressing the entire team. All right, he's at the center. The whole team's knelt down around him. I get up with the trainers. I'm a little disoriented. I passed out from running too hard. And Coach Snyder stops addressing the team. He looks right at me, and he goes, son, don't let me ever see you lay down on my football field again. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. But I'll, here's what I'll say. His expectations for us were way higher than what we thought were possible. And what's beautiful about Coach Snyder and what he did is he walked the walk, right? Like he exceed, exceeded the hype. He lived up to it. He modeled it for us, and it was great to be part of that program. And, Jen, and then John went on to be a Kansas City Chief, so if you don't love K-State, I know you love the Chiefs. Give him a big round of applause, and great to have him here tonight. Okay, just a little bit later, Coach Snyder continues on. Now we are in the Big 12, Todd, mm -hmm. and a team that you hate, the Texas Longhorns, come to Manhattan the first time to play in 1998. One of the greatest weekends of my life on September 7th, September 18th, Friday night, my youngest son, Landry, who just finished playing K-State football, was born. The next day, we kicked Texas's ass. Ricky oh, Williams gained 40 Weber. yards, and K-State won 48-7. to The next year, we went to Texas in Austin, killed him again, and a young man from Texas, Nick Leckie, said, maybe I'll go to K-State. You did that, and you had a pretty good career. You might remember a certain game. I don't know if one of your favorites might be 2003 with Todd Lebo Sooners, but... Uh, what was it like to get over the hunt and win, hunt, hump and win that Big 12 championship? Yeah, no, I, I think it was cool for me to see the, the, the bricks being laid in a program like K-State. As, as I was getting recruited by Texas and by K-State, and when I saw the 99 team at K-State throttle, absolutely throttle Texas and Austin, and I was there like getting recruited, they were like, oh, I don't know what just happened. And I was like, okay, I'm going here, just because I knew something special was going down in Manhattan. And you know, uh, us kids from Texas, we don't make it out of the Colt compound. You know, so that to me was like, okay, these guys are ki yeah, correct, corn sound. These guys are kicking ass up in Manhattan. I want to be a part of that. And I think the coolest thing about Snyder is that he extracts the most out of you. Whether you're a one star or a five star, your talent is going to get maximized at K State. And like what John said, you saw the old man's silver Cadillac, 6 a.m., 11 p.m. So, so he, he, he walked the walk, and you appreciated that. And in this era of coaches who are, like, trying to get to some other place, like, like, like the dude leaving Notre Dame and faking the LSU accent, like Brian Kelly, right? Like, that's not Snyder, right? He's here to LSU stay. That, you mean LSU that K-State beat 42 to 20? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, yeah, but, no, I, I, I love Snyder, and he maximized the most out of me, and so that, that Oklahoma game was fantastic, too. So in the, in the sense of a – Cat time, they call it. Yeah. You better be early. And we've been a little late here today because the people talked a little long. The meeting's supposed to be over before it starts. That's how we do. Big round of applause here for John McGraw, Nick Lecky, and Stan Weber from all of our K-Staters. And enjoy it. Thanks for 100 years of WHB.